going to show you how I took a color photo and ended up with this very dramatic lighting effect. Uh, some of this you've seen in previous movies. I thought I'd sort of pull it all together in one technique. So this is what we're going to end up with. And this is our starting point is a color photo. So let me put this layers palette over here so you can see what I'm doing. So first of all, I need to convert this to black and white. And here's a method that Scott Kelby uses that I kind of put a slight variation on that I really like because it gives me a lot of options. Part of the problem I always found with Channel Mixer is if you've ever played with this, you'll know that there's a very fine line between improving and blowing things out really quickly. You have to be really careful to get the result you want. So this is what I like doing. Now in CS3, frankly, I probably just use the black and white conversion, but this is CS2 I'm using. Don't let this icon fool you. That's just the way it works when you have both installed in your system. So first thing I'm going to do is add a uh, gradient map. And this is going to do just a very basic grayscale conversion. Then I'm going to go back to the background layer and add color balance. It's going to sound like a really strange choice, but here's why I like this because I can individually play around with shadows, midtones, and highlights. So for example, if I click on highlights and I start moving sliders, see how it's changing things in here. So you can basically play with these sliders in each individual area. So in the midtones, and I'm trying to again go for a slightly darker kind of look shadows, darken those up. So you see because I have the gradient map first and this underneath, because of course if I only had color balance I would be adjusting the colors. In fact let me show you if I were to click OK and not have the gradient map I'd have a very weird looking color photo but because of the gradient map on top it gives me that nice combination that I like. Now it's time to add the more dramatic look and I've shown this before. I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer I'm going to drag this side way down and even bring this in a little bit too to create this very dramatic black effect, something like that. Now I'm on the layer mask. I'm going to move this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to uh, paint. In fact, I'll do it this way. It'll be even easier. I'll just make a big selection. I'm just going to use my lasso tool to do a very rough selection, something like that. Rather than guess how much to feather, here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm just going to fill with black. So my black is my foreground color. Option delete or alt backspace will fill and I'll deselect and I'll get a very bad looking thing. Here's what my layer mask looks like now. But now what I can do is apply blur to that. So now this is kind of like getting a live preview. So I can move this around, decide. I want it to be pretty, a pretty vague rough border or something. I mean, very, I should say, very transitional borders. The word I was trying to say, not rough. So I'm liking the way that looks, but I, I still want to be even more dramatic in certain areas. And often, in the case like this, the simplest way would be to just add a new layer, which I'll fill with black. Of course, it'll temporarily cover everything. I'll hide that so I can once again make a very rough selection. So I'm just selecting those areas. Once again, I can just feather this. In this case, same kind of amount. Go back and hide this, excuse me, show this, and just hit the delete key to punch that out. Now that's a little bit too much, so I'm just going to lower the opacity so it kind of blends back in. I want to still see a little bit of those shadows, something like this. Now once I'm happy with the results, the last thing I would do is to go at the very top of my layers palette. Now if I'm CS2, I don't have to do anything else in CS. You'd have to first add a new layer, but I'm just going to press Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E, and that's going to make what amounts to a flattened version sitting on top, and then I can experiment with sharpening. The reason I like to do it this way is because this way I can experiment but know that I'm not making a permanent change. So I can go in here and do some pretty nice amount of sharpening something like that, but I also know at the same time that I have all the underlying layers below. So there you go, a quick little technique, but I think I, I like the look of this to go from, let me just, all I'm going to do is hide every other layer. Here's my original color photo, and here's the finished one, or almost finished one. Check it out, try it yourself. And of course, as an added bonus, these are adjustment layers, so you can easily apply those to other photos and get some pretty cool effects. Hmm, I like that. 
I'm the Dramatic Dave Cross. See you next time.